Well, first off, could you just explain your recent study of language barrier and breast cancer screening from Spanish speaking patients? Of course. So one of the main reasons why we decided to study this is because limited English proficiency has been, is known that the patients from this population, they tend to forego um, medical evaluation. So we had the question if having a limited English proficiency would also impact on screen mammograms. And this hasn't, this hadn't been studied from a national database. So we decided to look into the National Health Interview Survey database, which fortunately the way it's in the way it's developed because it's a multi-level strata and they put the patient's weight on this database. It actually gives you a pretty good estimate of the U.S. population. So we decided to look into the population from 40 to 75 years of age and the recommendations, the recommendations from um, the United States Preventive Service Task Force versus the um, um, American Cancer Society, we decided to look into the early starters from 40 to um, 45 and also 45 to 75 so we could understand the limited English proficiency within this broad population. In the end, we saw that there was a rate of 8.6% of limited English proficiency, but the most interesting thing here was that there was a difference in univariate analysis when looking into a limited English proficiency female population with the English speakers. There was a difference of 90 to 79% rates in, in mammograms but we wanted to make sure that we were having the most accurate results. So we decided to, develop, to do a propensity score match, which is a pretty interesting statistical technique where you take those covariates in, and you wanna to try to estimate the, the effect of an exposure, which in this case would be limiting this proficiency. And we, we were able to find that one of our strongest conclusions that the Spanish speakers had a a 27% less likelihood to have a screening mammogram. So as you know, the importance of screening mammogram is, is very, it's very important to understand as with screening mammograms, the overall survival has increased and making breast cancer one of the highest ones for ha having one of the highest overall five-year survival. So what would you say are the overall implications of these study findings? I think the most important implication is understanding that when studying disparities, it's not just about the things that we usually see as race, socioeconomic, insurance status, but there are also things within these subgroups. For example, the Hispanic population, it's not just that all the Hispanic population is the same, but there appears to be those that have, that speak mostly Spanish or in general, the limiting is proficiency patients are having less screening mammograms. And it's important to understand because we have to focus and do efforts to try to reach this population in a way in their native language for them to understand, which also goes hand in hand with health literacy. So are there any sort of planned next steps moving forward? Definitely. Something that we're trying to is through the breast um, clinic from my um, senior author, Dr. Cruz, who fortunately also is a Spanish speaker. So we're trying to develop at, at our institution more focus and in Spanish. Um, this is where my sometimes also, as I'm a Spanish speaker, sometimes I have to, um, you know, try to translate, but we're trying to develop easier ways that the uh, limiting English proficiency patients that go to the breast clinic understand the importance of, of uh, screening for breast cancer and, and therefore this can also reach the people around them to, to undergo screening mammogram and understand the importance of the screening mammogram. So for Spanish speaking patients, how would you recommend that they advocate for themselves in this space? That's, a, that's an excellent question. I think it has to do a lot with the cultural aspect of it. I think most of my life I've been very fortunate to be surrounded by Hispanic and Latino population. And sometimes they underestimate the severity of not going, not undergoing important interventions like it's screening mammograms. So I think it's trying to make it understandable 
about the importance and how much screening mammogram has been shown in to improve survival, but making it easier for them to understand and how important it is to to have this um, to have the screening mammogram. So I think it's more about this open communication and making sure that they understand all the benefits from this. So on the flip side, what sort of advice or recommendations would you give to healthcare providers knowing the information that you do now from the study? Definitely. I think when we develop, um, when trying to communicate to the limited insufficiency patients, it has to be very tailored to obviously every single language that the patients come into us and not, and not just give a pamphlet or something that's in Spanish. I think it's, it's important to have that translation service for, th for them to, to completely understand this. So I think to all those healthcare providers, especially the primary care physicians, when they encounter someone Spanish speaking, Mandarin speaking, Polish speaking, that's also a big population here in, in, in Chicago, it's, it's making sure that they understand with the translating services and make sure that you receive that feedback from them that they have understood why it's important to get a screening mammogram or any other type of medical um, care that they need. So that's all I had for you. Um, is there anything that I didn't ask that you think should be mentioned in this space? Um, maybe I think it's just important to, to highlight the number um, that it actually translates because sometimes in the study, even though it looks like the study population is only 1,040 of limited English proficiency, but like I said, because of how this database is developed, that equals 2.5 million U.S. women from 40 to 75 years that have limited English proficiency, and approximately 450,000 that have not had a, a previous screening mammogram. So it's important to highlight that the conclusions, even though the study population may seem low because of how this database is developed, it's actually a pretty big number, and we have to, like you said, we have to develop very targeted interventions towards these um, limited English proficiency population, and they are understandable in their language. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. I really do appreciate it.